name is GGU alumni. I'm Alex Wheeler and I am the Advancement Services Manager at GGU. Welcome to our first Alumni Association Director Profile Interview. I'm here with my associate, Audrey Tilson. Say hi to everyone, Audrey. Hi everyone, my name is Audrey Tilson and I'm the Executive and Research Associate at GGU. We're beyond excited to bring you an interview with Francis Presley Rice, GGU alum of 1976, retired Army Colonel, attorney, screenwriter, film producer, and author extraordinaire. Good morning, Francis, and thank you for joining us today. Hi, everyone. Thank you for inviting me. I'm delighted about the honor of being the first GGU alum to be interviewed. Our first question for you today is, what was your path to GGU? How did you come to attend the school and why? It may surprise you to learn that the Army led me to GGU. In 1973, while assigned to the Presidio of San Francisco Army Base, I decided to acquire an MBA to enhance my military career and competitiveness in the business world after I retired from the Army. I conducted research and became aware of GGU's stellar reputation for having experienced business executives as MBA instructors, particularly for evening courses. In 1974, after I completed one year of the GGU MBA program, I was afforded an opportunity by the military to attend a civilian law school during the day while still in the Army. So for the first two years of my three years in law school, I attended GGU at night and Hastings Law School during the day, graduating from GGU in 1976 and Hastings in 1977. Both my degree in law and my GGU MBA degree proved invaluable for my professional advancement. That's quite a heavy load and a very impressive academic path that you chose. Um, I'd like to know more about joining the Army. When did you join and why? My military journey began in 1964. On career day of that year, which occurred at the end of my second year at Clark College in Atlanta, Georgia, I spoke with an intriguing presenter, the Army recruiter. Join the Army, he said. His smile was engaging, his voice reassuring. See the world and finish your education all while serving your country and being paid by the army. His offer was too good to miss since I was working my way through college. The next day, after a battery of tests at the army recruiting station, I was sworn in as a private in the Women's Army Corps and went to Fort McCullen, Alabama for basic training. Later, I learned if I had finished my BS degree at Clark, I could have joined the Army as an officer, a lieutenant, rather than a private, the lowest rank in the Army. Sadly, it took me 10 years to finish my last two years of college. This delay was because I lost academic credits going from college to college in various states due to the Army's policy of reassigning people every two years. Finally, in 1973, while I was assigned at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, I obtained my BS degree from Drury University. Now, back in 1967, before I acquired my BS degree, I took advantage of the Army's program that permitted enlisted people with two years of college to attend Officer Candidate School, OCS. I graduated from OCS in 1967 with the rank of Second Lieutenant. Eventually, I retired in 1984 as a lieutenant colonel. At the time, I was the highest ranking woman in the Judge Advocate General's Corps and was honored with the Legion of Merit. What was your favorite part of being in the Army? At the top of my list is meeting my husband, Peter. My Husband and I were both assigned to Germany. We were both army officers. Near the top of my list is my being the adjutant, the key administrative officer, and the only woman in the basic combat training brigade at Fort Leonard Wood, 
from 1971 to 1973. Overall, I'm grateful I had an equal opportunity to climb the ladder of success in the Army from the lowest rank to the top, based on merit, not gender or skin color. What about challenges in the Army? Did you face any, and how did you overcome them? Well, the biggest challenge I faced when I joined the Army in 1964, long before the women's rights movement, of the 1970s was the fact that the military was male dominated. Yes, women had participated in all of our nation's wars starting with the American Revolution, but the, the traditional attitude that a woman's place was in the home persisted throughout our society. So for the first 10 years of my military service, there were regulations that placed limits on assignments and promotions based on gender. Other regulations precluded all military members from protesting regulations since such conduct would adversely impact good order and discipline. The ultimate punishment for disobeying regulations was dishonorable discharge. I overcame the regulatory obstacles and avoided being penalized by employing three strategies. First, I performed at the top level of all my assignments, including commander of a Women's Army Corps company, receiving multiple commendations and medals over the years for meritorious service. Second, I used my performance record as justification for requesting assignments formally held by men only such as adjutant of that basic combat training brigade, where I performed at a level commensurate with my male colleagues, demonstrating that the restrictions were not necessary. Third, I advocated for and was successful in obtaining establishment of equal opportunity offices throughout the Army and at the Pentagon in Washington, DC. Years later, my last assignment in the military was at the Pentagon where I served as a legal advisor to the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense responsible for ensuring equal opportunities for women. switch gears to your time as an attorney. I was wondering for GGU law students, uh, what are one or two pieces of advice you'd share with them as they make their way through law school? My advice is to have faith in yourself and never give up regardless of the obstacles you face. Consider challenges to be opportunities to achieve something great for yourself and others. Above all, remember, you are the master of your fate. If you stumble and fall, no one can keep you down except yourself. That's wonderful advice. I think we all need a reminder of that from time to time. You were recently elected to the GGU Alumni Association Board of Directors. What would you like the members of the Alumni Association to know about you? The primary reason I wanted to be part of the board is to use my experiences to help Ensure GGU students remain inspired to achieve their dreams. My story of going from impoverishment at the time of my birth in 1944, where measure of success today is reflective of the exceptional and inspirational accomplishments of Blacks over a 400 year period from 1619 to the present that are omitted or inadequately represented in history books. The lack of inclusion of the complete picture of black history in history books is why with my educator friend, Sandra K. Yoakum, I co-wrote the book, Black History, 1619 to 2019, an illustrated and documented African-American history that's available on amazon.com and through all national bookstores. The award-winning documentary, Black Seas, The History of Africans in America, is based on that book. Well, that was fascinating, Francis. 
Uh, thank you so much for joining Audrey and me today and sharing your story. We're really grateful for your time. It's been a pleasure getting to have this time with you, Francis. We're so pleased you helped us kick off our first Alumni Association Director Profile interview. I myself am leaving very inspired. Thank you. So thank much. you. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. My experiences and observations will be beneficial to GGU students. For those who are interested, additional information about Yaha's free educational materials available for download in PDF format can be found at yokumblackhistory.org.